So the Pittsburgh Steelers kicked off the season against the Atlanta Falcons, and there were so many storylines in this game. We learned early in the morning that Russell Wilson would not be playing, so Justin Fields would get his big opportunity. And I'm gonna dive deep to talk about what went down. And I'm gonna talk about how dangerous this team is now that they have a competent offense that's gonna be really good once they can get going and put the ball in the end zone. But before I begin, I would really appreciate it if you would drop a like and subscribe. We are on the road to 40k subscribers, and with your support, I believe we can get there super fast. All right, so let's start off recapping the game. With Justin Fields under center, you knew there was going to be a shift in game plan, even though Russ and Fields are similar players. Fields is way younger and has fresher legs. The game started off with two field goals by both teams on the first drive. We saw Justin Fields use his legs to pick up a big first down but he was a little rusty on some simple throws. In the Falcons' second drive of the day, Kirk Cousins made an ill-advised throw because of that Steelers pass rush, and Deshaun Elliott got a big interception. The Steelers' defense is really gonna have to do a good job of creating a lot of turnovers this year for the team to be super successful. Then in the following drive, Justin Fields made a good throw to Pickens for a 12-yard gain, and Najee Harris was putting in some work fighting for tough yards. Pickens ended up getting blown up on a first down for a loss of nine yards to pretty much ruin what the Steelers had going. But after fighting for a few yards, they were able to set up another long Boswell field goal to make it 6-3. The defense on the following drive was getting eaten alive at first. Drake London had a catch, Bijan was getting some solid gains, and then there was also a screen that the Steelers were not ready for. But midfield, the Steelers stood strong, stuffing a run and forcing a long third down in which the secondary made a great play. And then on the punt, Calvin Austin showed some of that elite speed, making a great return. I think he's going to be electric in the return game all season long. One thing I think the Steelers are going to use as their bread and butter this season is those little screen and check down plays. They aren't flashy, they don't often get big gains, but like I said, they grind out games and wear out a defense over time. And then with a mobile QB under center, that's going to add a whole nother dynamic to what Arthur Smith can do up in the box. Anyways, Justin Fields made a great throw to George Pickens who made a really good catch near the sideline, but he pushed off, so it got called back and ended the Steelers drive on a long third and 19 play. The following drive, you could sense Kirk Cousins was starting to get into a rhythm, and the Pittsburgh secondary was getting carved up. But then TJ Watt forced a fumble, but it was obvious that he crossed the line early. Actually, it wasn't that obvious. The timing was pretty close, but he did end up crossing early. And then they allowed a wide open touchdown to Pitts to go down by four. But in the remaining seconds before half, Fields found Pickens for a 33-yard gain, and the Steelers got into range for Boswell, who put another one through the uprights to make it 10-9 going into the locker room. And the second half did not get off to a very hot start, to say the least. Justin Fields got swallowed up on a third down, and then the special teams unit allowed a big punt return to set Cousins up with great field position for their first drive of the second half. But then in typical Pittsburgh fashion, and I only say that because I'm a Browns fan, they got lucky and Atlanta fumbled the snap, and TJ Watt jumped right on top of it to reclaim possession. Then Fields found a wide open Michael Pruitt for a solid gain, and Pickens nearly reeled in a one-hander, but it was just out of his reach. But Fields was able to get the first down on the very next play. The Atlanta defense was able to hold up, but the Steelers had a chance to kick a 56-yarder, and Boswell once again showed off that incredible leg, nailing it to put the Steelers up 12-10 completely by himself. After that, the Steelers got another stop, and the pressure was really starting to get to Cousins. Justin Fields was able to drive the ball down the field once again, but they just couldn't find a way to get six, settling for yet another field goal as Boswell hit his fifth of the game. Some MVP numbers, if we're being completely honest. TJ Watt really had one heck of a game. He was just getting super unlucky with the flags and Kirk Cousins getting rid of the ball at the right time. He was close multiple times to creating turnovers and he did fall on that fumble as well. He is the ultimate disruptor and he's a super fun player to watch. Unless you are a fan of the opposing team, of course. Anyways, the Pittsburgh offense started to get in the zone in the fourth, primarily through Najee Harris. He was showing some tough running and I think with Arthur Smith, a former back being the guy running the offense, he has a better idea of how to use Najee. He looked much better and it looked like he was wearing down the Atlanta defense throughout the game. You can't expect those big, long, explosive plays out of Najee. He's more of like an off-brand Derrick Henry who will get you four or five yards at a time if you hand him the ball when the defense isn't selling out to stop the run. And with Najee Harris getting going, the field also completely opened up for Justin Fields, and he began to play a lot more free, using his legs to pick up multiple first downs. You could tell it was driving the Atlanta defense crazy, because when they had to worry about covering Pickens and containing Najee along with his speed, it just became too much. But on 4th and 1, I'm not even sure what happened, but Fields couldn't pick up the first down on the sneak. So now all of a sudden, the Steelers had their backs against the wall a little bit. At least the defense did. But they were able to hold up, proving once again that they could be one of, if not the best defense in the league this year. 
So now with about five minutes to go, the Steelers had a five point lead and the ball. But they ended up punting after an Atlanta stand, but they lost their punter. And as soon as you thought Cousins and the Falcons had a real chance, Cousins made one of the dumbest throws I've ever seen in my life into a sea of Pittsburgh defenders for basically the game ceiling interception. And TJ Watt finished things off with a sack to officially end it. It was a very fitting ending to a great game. The reason I titled this video nobody wanted to see the Steelers start doing this is because we already know how dominant and how game changing the defense is. But this looked like a brand new offense with a competent QB. I know Fields wasn't perfect, he made a lot of mistakes, but I'm just thinking about what will happen when the offense gets going and starts putting the ball in the end zone. Combined with this defense and how disruptive TJ Watt is, it's going to be something to watch. And this is going to be a team that nobody wants to face. Alright, let's get into some of the numbers. Justin Fields threw for 156 yards, that's not much, but he took care of the ball and got the Steelers in scoring position often throughout the game. Najee Harris had 70 yards off 20 rushes, nothing too special there, but like I said, towards the end of the game, he wore the Falcons defense down. George Pickens was the leading receiver by far, as we all thought would happen. He had 85 yards off 6 receptions, and then the MVP of this game was obviously Chris Boswell, who was 6 for 6 on field goals, accounting for all 18 points. And his long was 57 yards, so some pretty impressive stuff. It will be interesting to see going forward what happens with the QB competition and what Mike Tomlin decides to do. I think it's going to be Russell Wilson under center next week. It's not like Fields blew anyone away, but at least in the back of their minds, the coaching staff knows that Fields can get the job done if things eventually fail with Ross. Looking ahead, next week, Pittsburgh will be on the road to face the Broncos, who dropped their first game of the year to the Seattle Seahawks. So this will be a great opportunity to potentially go 2-0, and as I've talked about so much with this team, they have to get off to a hot start with how brutal the schedule is to end the season. Here's what some of the players and coaching staff had to say in the postgame interviews following the win. Um, but, you know, after the first drive, I feel like we, we settled in a little bit, and especially as the game went along, definitely settled in. So um, definitely had that slow start for sure. Man, I'm just really appreciative of, of the efforts of our guys. Um, it was a fight. Um, obviously, we weren't perfect, man. There's week one like things, uh, particularly early on in the game. And that's really all I have to say for this video. Thank you all so much if you made it to this point. And if you enjoyed and haven't yet, please be sure to drop a like and subscribe because your support truly does mean the world. And also, let me know what you would like to see next. And until then, I will see you all later.